was a social media, media post by one of the organizers um, that were involved in uh, attending the legislature, ultimately shutting down uh, procedures. And so uh, it's came to our attention that uh, through social media that, and, and this post that there was a meeting uh, with the a part of the NDP caucus with the organizers on November the 14th. Ultimately, uh, it was a day later that we uh, saw uh, the, 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 the post about uh, the visit to the legislature on November the 20th being shared uh, by one of the caucus members. And then we all saw what happened on November 20th with really what was an unprecedented shutdown of government operations here in Saskatchewan. And so uh, the question uh, really is for, uh, you know, the opposition leader and the opposition members of caucus is, uh, you know, why, why, why did you not mention this meeting? I, she did a scrum with all of you. I think I was asked uh, numerous times as to, you know, was there uh, conversations that happened with the organizers in organizing uh, the shutdown of government, the attendance in the House? And, and I, I, just, I just don't know that uh, the, the opposition caucus members have been straight with the people of Saskatchewan. And so that's a question that uh, they will have to answer. Well, if you have, uh, what, I, what concerns me is, uh, one, we had a shutdown of, of government operations in Saskatchewan, which uh, is, is really quite unprecedented. Certainly in, in my time here and for a, a period of time before I arrived in 2011, that, that has not occurred. Um, and so I think there should be an investigation as to, you know, why that was, other things that can be improved so that uh, doesn't happen again. Uh, when you have, uh, whether it be extremist activists or self-proclaimed radicals, involvement from members of the legislative assembly in that kind of uh, that kind of uh, organization that, that's something that uh, somebody should get to the bottom of um, because that's not proper conduct for elected members instruction I had provided uh, with respect to, uh, you know, convoys uh, very in various provinces, including this one, uh, convoys in our, our national capital of, uh, uh, of Ottawa, Ontario, uh, was have your voice heard, follow the law. Um, and if you don't follow the law, the consequences of the law most certainly uh, will, uh, you know, be bestowed upon you. That was my... Uh, that was my uh, words uh, from the very beginning uh, in that case, and I, I would hope that those That's words were shared here too. So the next question is, what were the demands of this group? And because uh, it was a very, well, next, very next I, I day. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, you go ahead, and then I'll go. Sorry, go ahead. I, I was just wondering how, how, why it differed. Because people meet with caucuses all the time. I yeah. wonder what law wasn't followed. I get that there was a disruption. I get, mm -hmm. you know, obviously we've all written about it and, and, yeah. and had our say about it. But yeah. I'm trying to wonder specifically what law you're, you're referring to wasn't followed because there was no arrest. There was no anything else that in regard to, you know, it was disruptive and, you know, in my humble opinion, it should have happened, but that's yeah. not necessarily breaking the law. Yeah, and you and I would uh, agree with our humble opinions on that. Uh, look, and again, not answers for me to provide. November 14th is a meeting uh, between the NDP caucus and the, uh, um, you know, and the organizers of, of, of the group that ultimately shut down uh, government operations. November 15th, member of the NDP shares uh, all of the information, uh, encouraging people to come uh, to the legislature on November the 20th. In that date, I believe as well, the leader of the opposition um, changes uh, their policy with respect to a ceasefire uh, in uh, in, uh, in, in Gaza, um, and then ultimately November 20th, uh, we saw what happened uh, with uh, the folks hosted uh, not only in the Legislative Assembly, but in the NDP caucus office as well. All questions, I think that the, the Leader of the Opposition and Opposition Caucus members uh, should answer. Did they attend a meeting with the organizers? Uh, what were the, the demands of those organizers uh, in that meeting, or were there demands of the organizers, and which ones uh, would have they agreed to and, and acquiesced to? Well, nefarious would be shutting down the operations of government. Uh, certainly, uh, shutting down the operations of any government, whether it be a provincial government or a national governor or a municipal government, for that matter, is, is entirely uncalled for. Um, okay. When one of your um, ministers today was already made to apologize by the Speaker for these same allegations that you're now issuing, what do you make of that? Um, I make nothing of that. I, I 
I, 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 I heard a minister say the very same things that I said in the, uh, uh, in the Legislative Assembly, and those words were, uh, the Leader of the Opposition has some answers to provide uh, Saskatchewan residents because, uh, to date, uh, she has not mentioned that she met with the organizers about a week before uh, they came to this Legislative Assembly and shut down uh, the, the government for a period of time. She needs to be straight with Saskatchewan people as to what happened at that meeting. Did she attend the meeting? Which members of her caucus attended the meeting? This is someone that's vying to, to lead the province um, and, and, and can't even be straight with the people that she intends to represent. Hasn't, hasn't the Speaker, though, established that these are unfounded allegations? And what are your, uh... No, the, the words were around uh, referring to uh, caucus. We're, we're, we're going to have some questions around it, precisely what the, the guidance from the Speaker with respect to the legislative, uh, the legislative rules are in there, because there's some confusion, I think, uh, with respect to that ruling. But we'll uh, get that straightened out in, in the meantime with the, uh, with the Speaker's office. Why did your government reject the motion? to have the auger look at the $172,000 that went to Mr. Uh, uh, Graywell's uh, establishment for yep. social services. Is there not a concern in relation to that issue? And shouldn't the, the government do its utmost at this particular point to make sure that, that, that everything's up for Certainly. Um, and what the minister is committed to is, uh, and, and the, the member, uh, to my understanding, uh, the member will be meeting with the, uh, the, the Conflicts of Interest Commissioner upon his return from his uh, uh, mourning, his, the, the, the passing of his brother, uh, to confirm that there is no conflict of interest uh, in this case. Uh, the auditor can, can look into uh, any government operations that they choose, um, and, and most certainly uh, we support the auditor's work when that, when that occurs. Last uh, but not least, I think very important, the, the, the minister has also said, as I uh, said the, the other day, is uh, he is doing a review, an internal review uh, in the Ministry of Social Services on their procurement policies when it comes to uh, providing uh, hotel space uh, for people on a short-term basis when uh, we may not have shelter space available, maybe transitionary, a transitionary time for a family as we transition them to a social uh, housing unit within the Sask Housing Authority or some other, um, some other uh, space. This, this is an area that and I think it might be a reasonable time for even a broader look within government on, you know, how are we, one, supporting people through a time of, of increasing the homelessness, uh, often due, often due to, resulting from various causes, but often due to, uh, you know, mental health and all too often uh, subsequent drug Have addictions. Have you had your conversations with Mr. Rewald uh, on this in relation to conflict of interest? No. And no. 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 Do you have a timeline on your trip to Dubai? Like what day are you going? Yeah, I, you be there for? I think I'm leaving in just over a week. I think I'll be on the ground there, I understand, about seven days. Um, you know, really looking forward to telling the, the Saskatchewan story. And I, I, I would say alongside uh, the what, what the nation of Canada is doing there as well. You know, when we have our trade offices in various markets, we have, uh, you know, procured some space uh, at the, the COP28 conference. Uh, it's really to add to the, to the Canadian story that is being told there. And we have, I think, a significant uh, portion to add to that story uh, in what we do in Saskatchewan, you know, providing food and energy security to over 150 countries around the world. And I think, think the forgotten part is, is the how we are producing uh, and mining uh, those products. Uh, we are producing some of the most sustainable products that you can find on earth and I've, I've said that many times and I'm going to say it many times uh, when we're on the ground in in uh, in Dubai we're going to have uh, at least 40 different companies that are, that are operating and employing people in Saskatchewan communities that will be there um, what the government is doing is providing that platform for those companies to tell their story for example a net zero oil company to talk about what they're doing uh, to be the only net zero oil company to my knowledge in Canada, North America and likely around the world. To talk, our potash companies will be joining us to uh, tell the story of how they have about half the, the carbon emissions on a per ton basis than, than uh, the, the, the larger, their larger competitors around the world and of course uh, the agriculture, agricultural story uh, that we have in Saskatchewan where we are producing uh, by far the most sustainable food that you can find on earth. And so looking forward to going uh, and joining over 40 different uh, industry partners uh, from Saskatchewan, employing people uh, in Saskatchewan uh, communities uh, to tell the how 
uh, how we are producing uh, the sustainable food, the sustain sustainable energy, and the sustainable fertilizer that we are. Well, can, you, can you tell us how much time you think you'll spend in the green zone versus the blue zone. So, I just, the green zone is the in the, the credential zone. zone. Where, where yeah, the yeah. Zone. So we've made some requests uh, from the federal government. Ten, uh, actually, and of which I think one was officially accepted. We're continuing to work with them as well. Uh, you know, Saskatchewan brings an important uh, part of the Canadian story uh, when it comes to sustainable production of goods that the world needs. Doesn't just want needs when you, food, energy, uh, fertilizer. Those are needs, not wants. Um, and so. We want to ensure that we're bringing that not only through the, uh, the Saskatchewan uh, footprint and opportunity that we have, but also through uh, the, the Canadian delegation booth as well. And so we're hoping that uh, there might be some additional opportunity uh, to present uh, as well on, on what we do in Saskatchewan, not only in what I understand is the blue zone, which is where we are, um, but also uh, in, the, uh, in the green zone at, at, the team, at the Canada Pavilion as well. Well, I think I answered that just a, a moment ago. Uh, the auditor can look into any government operations that they uh, choose, and we, we support the work uh, uh, that the auditor does. Uh, um, Mr. Graywall, when he returns from uh, mourning his, the passing of his brother, uh, he, I think, has already arranged uh, to sit down and, uh, with the Conflict of Interest Commissioner and to confirm that there was no conflict in this uh, particular case. Um, and the, the, the minister uh, has asked his, uh, his Ministry of Social Services to uh, look into the procurement policies that we have that have been long-standing under various governments, but to look into those procurement policies and ensure that we are, one, getting the best value for uh, the taxpayer investment, but two, uh, we are being as reactive as possible in supporting those that may need a short-term uh, a short-term shelter um, and 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 uh, you know this is a this is a space that uh, comes up at our uh, a conversation that comes up at our council of federation meetings is around homelessness shelters and, and what are some of the causes and how do we uh, uh, ultimately uh, support the people in our community so it's a changing space so it's i think a, a fair time for a review of what those policies are sorry me Imagine that there's a lot of social service clients. Yeah. One going to one hotel. Yeah. Under the circumstances. Yeah. There, there aren't a lot of hotels. Not you know. Not every hotel accepts a social services client. Some will at a at a you know varying rates. Um, I, I think the more alarming number is the 2.2 million uh, that we actually are uh, procuring in hotels across the province. It speaks to. Uh, um, you know, when you put that alongside the expansion, expanded investments that we've made in shelter space, uh, the expanded investments uh, that we are uh, continue to make in in supporting people as they transition to uh, their own home, uh, that that larger number is actually the the one that we should be concerned about as a society. And and I think there's some work for us to do, not only in Saskatchewan in this space, and we're doing some of this work with our two largest municipalities uh, right now, which may expand beyond that. Um, but there's some work for us to do across the nation of Canada in this in this area as well. What's your, message? Yeah, what's your message to people that want to visit the legislature now with the changes? So it's it's the public's building, and, and listen, the the, uh, the the legislative uh, security unit has made some changes there. I wasn't aware of those changes until they were reported out, um, and you know, but we respect uh, the, the decisions that they make. We're thankful, uh, most certainly, for uh, the security that they provided uh, the other day. Uh, we had you know students uh, in the building. We had you know we have we have we have Jewish Canadians that work in this building, and you know they heard some some chants uh, that are you know very much regarded as, as anti-semitic chants uh, from the river to the sea for example um, so thankful for the security that we that we have in this building and thankful for uh, the the actions that they performed uh, the the other day um, my understanding is they're they're temporary um, and uh, um, but I, I, I would say this, I encourage the public to come. This is their building, uh, it's a building of governance, uh, but also can encourage the public to be respectful. These, these uh, changes that the security unit has made are a response uh, to really what is an unprecedented action, uh, the government being shut down for a period of time. And I'd say the secondary response is uh, uh, that the government itself, through uh, the, the tools that, uh, that are there, are going to look and ensure that none of the members on the legislative uh, floor that are serving uh, as elected members had anything to do uh, with organizing uh, that unprecedented act as well. Well, yeah, from River to Sea is an anti-Semitic com anti comment that uh, has been, uh, you know, widely regarded uh, as being uh, just that. It uh, is a comment that is often associated with uh, the ethnic cleansing of, of Israel. 
And so put yourself uh, in that position with that chant be happening uh, in a public building, a building of governance as a Jewish Canadian. Um, so um, thankful, very, very thankful for the, the legislative security unit that we have here. I understand that a member of the opposition may have liked the post that, that phrase. I didn't see Even more troubling. Uh, Self-proclaimed uh, radical member of the opposition, one that I have said uh, is nothing short of, of an extremist member of this legislative assembly. And again, uh, you know, the, the, the people of Saskatchewan uh, should uh, take great interest in the fact that uh, the, 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 the opposition caucus, the NDP caucus, is increasingly uh, being viewed as being a, a gathering of, of self-proclaimed radicals or extremists, uh, liking posts like this, anti-Semitic posts like this, um, and not being straight with the Saskatchewan people on who they're meeting with in uh, the week leading up to an unprecedented shutdown of government operations. Thanks, Thank you, everybody. Thank you.